104.7 The Cave. I'm like the intern. I've got my good buddy, my key to 1985, my full yes. can of hair spray, my fresh tube yeah. of mascara. Jay Stevens in the studio with me this morning, man. What's going on? What's going on, Mike? So um, we're both musicians, and uh, we've been talking about doing this bit for a while. It's uh, I think we're going to call it Rip It Apart Wednesday. Yes, perfect. And every Wednesday, we will take a song and try and break it apart, part by part, get into it, really grab it by the horns, and figure out what's going on. I'm excited. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm sorry. I was deep in thought there. <laughs> was thinking about I, I, I was deep in thought. <laughs> I was watching the waveforms move as you talked. It's, it's amazing. Just, oh my God, this is crazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> what is this? Yeah, get in there deep and let's uh, analyze what goes on in making a song, a hit song. A lot of these songs are really big hits, and things go on in the mix that you don't hear when you're just listening to the song. We're going to dig in there deep and, and, and give insight into what goes on behind the scenes. Yeah. And um, our first song we're going to kick this off with, and I think it's perfect because it's kind of a, a different song for the artist, but at the same time, it's got one of the most amazing guitar players on it. I mean, as far as production goes, you've got one of the best producers at the time, in, in my opinion, right now, but he was super hot. But the guy who wrote and recorded this song wasn't really into the style of music at the time. This was kind of a turn for him. He was... You know, a glam rock. Definitely he different. He different. was a guy wore makeup. He was an alien. He was as glam was an and alien. androgynous as you could get. He, he may have slept with men. He uh, we, uh, may have. We're not going to argue. There's that rumors. Point. May have. But, but I, I, I may have too. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not one to talk. You know, you look at me. You look at me. Lots of fog in the eighties, man. <laughs> Back of a dark tour bus. It's all the same, guys. <laughs> So we are going to do David Bowie's Let's, Let's Dance today. So uh, let's kick it off with the intro of this song. Put on okay? your red shoes and dance the blues. That's right. So here is the intro to Let's Dance. Oh, God, yes. So that intro really is like... I you mean, know it's just, you know it's coming. It's just like, oh. So right now we got the guitar part playing underneath it, right? And I, honestly, it's one it's, of my favorite things about this song. It sounds like a synth almost. Listen to it. Yeah, it's just... It's, Are it's we got, sure that's a guitar mic? There's guitar right there, but then the horns come in. Well, not right there, but there it goes. With the little pan yeah. echo going on? Yeah, perfect. Now... Um, We'll get to who's playing guitar in a little bit, but I just, this is my favorite part. That delay on that song is just. Yeah, very uh, uh, pre, pre U2. Pre U2. Pre Edge. But putting that sax and the yeah. guitar together is so funky. And I guarantee you that was all Nile Rodgers' idea. Nile Rodgers was really the guy who, who produced this song and kind of helped Bowie get the feel of the song, right? It is so different for Bowie. It, I remember. Not, I remember when this came out. It oh, was, dude, it the was, video. What's so going good. on? Yes, the video actually was shot in, I uh, believe, Australia, and he had those Aboriginal couple kind of like you remember that thing, and they and Bowie's in the desert, and he's kind of at the bar, and he's watching this couple, and I think it was kind of a uh, say on like, look at this Western world trying to affect this thing that's been around for thousands of years. And, you know, Bowie. Isn't this when you address very Miami Vice like? Yeah, it okay. is. It is. So um, we'll get to more of Rip It Apart Wednesday. We're tearing apart Let's Dance for David Bowie. It's on the way next on 104.7 The Cave. One hundred four point seven, the cave. I'm like the intern in the studio with Jay Stevens this morning. We are ripping it apart Wednesday today. Yes. And um, what that means is we're taking a song, we're breaking it down, we're separating the tracks, we're going to talk about who played on it, who produced it, who the brains behind the song is. Because like you mentioned earlier, we hear these songs, they're hits, you see David Bowie in the video and yeah. that's it. Yeah. You think it's all Bowie, yeah. but it's not. And, and you, you miss parts of the song that are epic little pieces speaking, inside. Speaking of which, this bass line. This bass line is unbelievable. The song, okay. by the way, is Let's Dance by David Bowie for just joining us. Yes. Oh, there we go. Nasty. I mean, uh. That is just 
so funky. It's really, it's chic, in my opinion. And the reason that is is because Nigel... What was that? Wait a minute. I don't know. What what was that? I have no idea where it came from. Anyway, uh, so... uh, Carmine Rojas was the bass player on this thing. I look, just look at the guy's picture. He looks like just I mean, he, funk master. He is the funk master. Now, only he only play, he played with Bowie on this period, 83, 87. He also played with uh, Julian Ooh, this, Lennon in the 80s. Is this fretless? Is fretless bass? Is that what I'm hearing? This little slides? Ooh. It sounds, yeah. It yeah, also sounds so kind of like really produced. Very, you know I mean? very processed. Yes, yeah. very, very processed. See, kids, put effects on your instruments. This is what happens. They used to call... I had a guy I used to record with uh, Lou Whitney uh, passed away a few years a year ago and amazing amazing musician and he always used to give me crap about all the effects I use and he used to call it a talent station Yes, <laughs> to, there you go. You don't need a lot of talent if you hey, got a lot of effects. But this that's isn't my the, the theory of my life. <laughs> uh, so there so, we go. Okay. So Carmine, all right, he's building it. Now, I just want to lay down this real quick. Carmine has played with everyone. He played with Tina Turner, Stevie Wonder, Ron Wood, Stevie Ray Vaughan, B.B. King, Clapton, Jagger, Bonamassa. He's actually on tour with Bonamassa right now as his bass player. And, I mean, the list goes on and on with this thing. Now, like I said, now Rogers produced this thing, and um, you couldn't have a funky beat like this without the drums. So let's kick the drums in. Listen to that snare, gated reverb right snare. It's just like, it's nasty. Now, it does sound produced. It does sound really Well, this produced. was the 80s, guys. This is what we did. And like I said, I for a long time, I always just thought it was some kind of drum machine. Because in the 80s, that well, was a big yeah, deal. Yeah, I would have thought they were all all uh, electronic uh, devices. Yeah, but... But there's really people. There's really people. And the guy's name is Tony Thompson. He was a member of Chic, and obviously... Um, now Rogers, I'm sure, brought him in and said, hey, we need this guy on your record. For a tight backbeat. Yeah. Oh, here we go. It just builds and builds and builds and builds and builds and builds. We'll get to more of Rip It Apart Wednesday on Less Dance by David Bowie on the way next on 104.7 The Cave. 104.7 The Cave, Mike the Intern. Welcome back to Rip It Apart Wednesday, where we take a song, break it down piece by piece, and then put it all back together in the studio with Jay Stevens this morning. And we are doing Let's Dance by David Bowie. Radio you, geniuses here at work. Do you remember the first time you heard this song? Do you Can you remember that far oh, back? Oh, gosh, no. But um, I've been thinking it would have been on a video, perhaps, because um, I didn't listen to this type of music, so to say, but I would watch MTV quite a bit. And uh, my dad made videos for MTV back in the early days, and so this was right in that era. So I used to watch a lot of MTV. And David Bowie wasn't wasn't my thing, but I was hip to his spaceman antics. Yeah, oh, big time. And I've, I've been a big, big, big fan of Bowie for a long time. Speaking of the videos, it was a pretty big video for Bowie, and I guess David Mallet was the one who directed it. He also had done Ashes to Ashes and Distant Early Warning from Rush, which is pretty cool. And then uh, later on did Queen's Radio Gaga and I Want to Break Free uh, videos. So the guy has a pretty nice list of uh, videos that he directed. Did uh, Photograph and Rock of Ages from Def Leppard. Well, now we're talking. Now we're talking. Radio Goo Goo. Yeah, guy definitely knew what he was talking about. Did You Shook Me All Night Long from ACDC, the live version. Oh, all of a sudden he got cool now. Yeah, oh man, he's got all kinds of stuff on here. This this is a, I mean, come on. Look at that list. That is a This is This is Mallet? Huge. David David Mallet. Is his name british director this. now um, this kooky brits this song is important to me because of the guitar player on it uh rumor has it that stevie ray vaughn was playing a i think it was the montreux jazz festival and all the blues guys like i think he got booed or something and everyone was just like what is this guy <laughs> what is this guy who is this dude and they, Who's this guy and trying they, to be they, like jimmy hendrix they didn't like him but one guy in the audience did and that was david bowie so he got backstage and asked Stevie if he would record a couple guitar solos for his upcoming album, Let's Dance. And so that little thing we played earlier with the delay guitar, I don't think that's um, Stevie Ray Vaughan. I'm pretty sure that's Bowie. But the guitar solo at the end, which I'm about to play for you, is. And this is what follows. Boom. 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 And... You can smell the Fender amp in, oh my in God. here. It's just, it, it's, there's tone for days. There are guitar players in this world that would give their firstborn yeah. a way to have a tone like Stevie Ray Vaughan. And it's unmistakable. As soon as you hear it, you know it's him. It's 
soon as you hear it, you know it's punishing, it. punishing the strings. Punishing, and only on top of that, the guy used like what 13, 14 gauge strings, which if you're not a guitar player, is a very, very, very thick string to play. And the and way to he bend, bends to those bend, things, yeah. Oh my god, iron fingers is what he's doing. Just monster hands. And I wonder if he did this on the first take. I wonder if they're like. I wouldn't be surprised. Bowie's like, all right, Stevie, roll it, and yeah. then he just goes in there and does it. Yeah. Everyone just like, oh my god, this guy. Yeah, and this probably guy. drop the guitar. Boom, yeah. done. We'll get to more with Rip It Apart Wednesday on the way next on 104.7 The Cave. 104.7 The Cave, welcome back to Rip It Apart Wednesday. Jay Stevens and myself are ripping apart Let's Dance by David Bowie. We showed you the amazing guitar work from Stevie Ray Vaughan. We showed you the funky rhythm tracks by members of Chic, and I'm sure now Rogers had a big part in this because he's the one who produced it. Now we're on to the uh, cherry on top. Here's where we go. Here's It's coming home the now. Cherry on top. Put on your red shoes. And dance the blues. That is right. So, uh, okay, we're going to go just straight vocals in this weird little... What is that device? We're trying to figure it out. Wait a minute. Very sexy boy. Very sexy boy. It's just so much. Is somebody somebody mixing a cocktail in the background? (laughs) What is that? I don't know. But you you wonder as a producer, the guy's like, you know what this you know song what this song really needs? <laughs> <laughs> Grab those two pens and that coffee mug, please. Wait, I'm gonna. I can right here. Put put on. I could have been in Bowie's band. Put some reverb on that. I, I could have been in Bowie's band. I missed my calling. Now, um, obviously, this song like got Bowie a very much younger audience than he was used to from the 70s because we're talking about 10 years difference. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This um, is... and, and the guys that were listening to Bowie, you know, Space Oddity and Ziggy Stardust were probably not like, what is this? And the drugs wore off yeah, and, and the they drugs... were like, wait a minute, we have to go to work now? We got to make money to pay it's, for This is the truck. 80s? This sucks. <laughs> so, but the funny thing is, is uh, Bowie said he didn't know who the people were listening to. He didn't know who his fans were. He couldn't identify them. He didn't know what they wanted. So he, he, made, he threw everything at the wall. Yeah, and That's so what he, did. he kind of made an attempt to try and cater to this. I think it kind of creatively, in my opinion, creatively. I think he probably hated it. I think he probably hated it. No, he did. And that's why he changed it after a while. Yeah. But um, this album, I really think is great because it obviously had China and Girl had Let's Dance on it, and uh, he that, sounds good. That could be an Aborigine actually communicating. That's probably maybe what it Like is. it could be you said they were down in Australia that's, when they, it could true. be they could have hired a local tribesman to come <laughs> in and, and call kangaroos. Oh my god. And just they put effects on it. So you think we can do this every Wednesday? I, every Wednesday. This is the thing to do. Every Wednesday we're gonna rip it apart. Um, without further ado, thank you for checking out Rip It Apart Wednesday and uh, it's Let's Dance in its entirety by David Bowie on 104.7 the cave. <laughs> 